Thank you. Uh, first, I'd, I'd like to kind of follow up on what uh, Worley and Ann were talking about yesterday, because uh, I know for me, and I'm sure for everybody else, uh, it's been an incredibly inspiring you know, few days. It's, uh, it's incredible to have an opportunity to be uh, around a group of people that believe anything is possible. And uh, so I, I thank everybody for that. And I thank uh, Yarrow, uh, Sean, all the other guys, and everybody from Hatch for having the, the vision to, uh, to have me here. So I'd like to tell you my story. And for me, my story always starts with my family. Give me one second here. I'll get this. So can you see here? I'm sorry, I'll try to do that quickly. All right. All right, so. All right, so there I am. And this is my family. I want to introduce you to my wife, uh, Jennifer, my three uh, great kids, Harrison, Charlie, and uh, Grayson. And there we are at uh, New Hampshire for a ski weekend. And I can assure you there's nothing that I enjoy more in the world than being with my family on a mountain. It just does not get any better. And there's nothing that I, that I want to enjoy more, that I want to enjoy more. And therein lies the problem. That's the trap. That's the trap for my mental illness, who's going to try to rob me at every step of the way. And I'm looking out as my day begins at a landmine, if you can picture, of worries. A landmine of, of worries that's going to try to trip me up, and it's going to come fast, it's going to come furious, and as always, it's going to come over something completely, totally ridiculous. And this day, it's going to get me good. Here I am, I'm getting ready to get on the, on the lift, and I'm putting my, my boots on, the kids, it's all crazy, and uh, they're pumping some music out, and I'm feeling cool and feeling hip, and I'm listening to the song, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I remember that song when I was in college, right? And I'm trying to think of the damn name of the song. I can't come up with it. And then I'm trying to think of the name of the band, too. Now, I think there isn't anybody here who hasn't had that moment before. Oh, yeah, what the hell's the name of that song? What's the name of that band? You, you think about it maybe for a minute, maybe two minutes. I guess in this day and age, you look at your iPhone, right? Or you ask your friend, no big deal. Well, for me, it's like having a gun to my head because I have got to come up with the name of that band, and I've got to visualize who they are. And here's the kicker. It throws off a level of anxiety that's impossible to explain. As I travel and I speak, uh, people always ask me, and they're curious, Jeff, what's it like? What's it like? Well, here's what, what the anxiety is like. Picture, if you will, you're in a crowded airport, O'Hare, any of these, these other ones, and you're with your, your two or three-year-old child, right? And you turn around for a moment, like this, all right? Then you turn back, no kid. I think everybody can understand that level of anxiety. For somebody like me, I have that same exact level of anxiety over completely something stupid. And it can go on for hours, sometimes days on end. So here I am on the mountain, and I'm heading up the, uh, on the lift line. All right, it's a hallmark moment, right? I got one, one kid here, another kid here, beautiful scenery, and my kids are giggling and laughing. I mean, it just doesn't get any better, right? So here I am, I've got, uh, I'm behind my goggles, right? And I got my eyes closed, and I am going through the alphabet, trying to come up with the name of the band. Then, if I get lucky enough to get that, I'm gonna have to try to visualize the face of the lead singer. That's some crazy shit, right? All right, so here, here I'm heading up the, uh, the mountain now, and I get to the top, um, you know, the top of the mountain, and I look down at the terrain, and I think to myself, and I, I swear to God, I look down at the terrain, and I say, I would walk up that mountain barefoot and endure that physical pain if the mental anguish I had would just go away. All right, so I came here today not so that you'd feel bad for me, okay? This is not a pity party. All right, I came here for another reason, and I, I'd like to, to show you. I came here to... It's a horseshoe to explain 
that I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the lucky ones because I got diagnosed with OCD almost 30 years ago. And for the last 30 years, I fought a debilitating illness that's tried to rob me every day of my life, even as I'm up here talking to you today. But through medication, painful exposure therapy that I do, and the loving family and friends, I've been able to, to maintain a, a productive and wonderful life. One-fourth of the people in this country, one-fourth of the people at Hatch in this audience have a diagnosable mental illness, okay? I tell people if I'm sitting at a table with three others we haven't dinner last night, they don't have to worry, I got it covered, all right? But, <laughs> but it's not the one-fourth. That, that, I mean, that's a, it, the, the number that's more staggering is two-thirds. Two-thirds of those people, of us, will not get the help that we need or deserve primarily due to stigma. Now, that is criminal. That's criminal. And the, for people like myself who suffer from mental illness, it, it, it doesn't go away. And as fate would have it, um, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I'm coming home from work one day, and I'm desperate, desperate like a lot of people that suffer from mental illness, right? And um, a friend of mine had told me that painting might be good for you. Well, when you're desperate, you will try anything. So yours truly, being uh, creative, I show up at the paint store, I get all the supplies, I head home, and I start painting. And you've all seen uh, Forrest Gump and how he ran. You are looking at the Forrest Gump of painting, all right? I never stopped. And a few things happened for me. You know, first was I gained a sense of control, a sense of control that, that my illness robs me of. The second thing that happened was um, I found some peace of mind, at least while I was recreating. There's a lot of creative people here. I got lost from all of my worries. And the last thing that happened was um, I, uh, painting provided me a blank canvas, if you will, for my own vision and creativity. I think we all know that whether your business life, your personal life, and we've heard stories today and yesterday, you can't control what happens. You just can't. But when I painted, and I created, I was the boss, I was in control, and I found that invigorating to my soul. So, I had gotten to the point in my life, I was, and uh, I wanted more, and I wasn't sure, my mid-40s, and um, I was the uh, CEO of a textile company, and I was selling fabric for a living, not exactly changing the world, okay? Um, I was discouraged at um, my own progress with my, my illness, that I wasn't uh, able to do more or get better. And I was fighting something that was invisible, uh, that people couldn't see, and the people, even the people closest to me, I don't really think they believed, or probably still do, um, that I suffered as much as I did. And lastly, my apologies, I was hardly inspired at the point in my life. So as, as fate would have it, um, the Discovery Channel found out about my story and they came to Rhode Island, and my wife, Jen, and I gave them complete access to our family for three days. Three days in the hope of, of putting a face, a face on mental illness. And when the documentary aired a few months later, the first time you watch it, you, you hope they do a good job. And it was wonderful, and it was something that we were really proud of, and I hope uh, everybody here someday might have a chance to, to see that. But it, re it was re-watching it the second time, the third time, Maybe the fourth time, this happened to me. I got hit by a lightning bolt. Not a real lightning bolt. I've been waiting for that to hit me for my health, and that hasn't happened. Um, but I got hit by a lightning bolt that would change the course of my life. Right then and there. My aha moment, if you will. And as I watched that, uh, that documentary, I almost, did I lose this thing? As I watched that, it's almost like I had an out-of-body experience. I'm watching the television, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, I want to be that guy. I want to be him. He's calm, he's cool, he's collective, he's got passion, 
He's inspired. He's got a vision. How come I can't be that guy? Well, I went to my father, who was a wise man, and I asked for his advice. And he said to me, you know, Jeff, you've got to find what you can do better than anybody else in the world, whatever the heck that is. Pretty good advice. So I took it and went to my, my studio, which is like a, uh, like a mad scientist lab, and I've got canvases, and I've got sketch boards, and inspiration boards, and pencils, and paints, and it's, it's crazy. And I keep, I'm trying to figure this thing out, and I keep painting my alter ego, which is this guy. And I'm making these circles, and I'm trying to figure this out. And then I came up with it. And I came up with it in the form of this target right here. On the outside of that target, I was a, a loving father, son, brother, friend, compassionate, empathetic, given the struggles that I had been through in my own life. That target got, got smaller. Self-taught artist. I knew the power of art firsthand because I lived it. That target got smaller. I was a teacher. As improbable as that was, I wasn't a doctor, I wasn't an art therapist, I was a nobody. Just a guy who showed up one day at a children's psychiatric ward and figured if it was good for me, maybe it would help these kids. It got smaller. Mental illness suffer. Unless you live it, you can't possibly know. And there it was. There was the answer to the question. There was the bullseye. Not despite, but because of my illness. I felt I was someone that was uniquely qualified to articulate and communicate a message of hope and acceptance about mental illness, a very tough issue that this world has not gotten its hands on yet. So, I got this crazy idea. I got this crazy idea that I would go out and I would try to make mental illness cool, all right? Now, not cool to have it, because I can assure everybody here it is not cool to have it, all right? But cool to support it, cool to support it. Eight years ago, eight years ago, I had painted this symbol right here. And you probably recognize it, it's a combination of two icons, the heart and the peace symbol. But for me, it meant a lot more. It meant love in my heart and peace of mind, the two things I was so desperate for in my own life. And if you ask people who suffer, they won't tell you that's the big things that they rip us off of. It's the little things. If you ask me what makes me happy, I'll tell you it's having a cup of coffee with my wife or reading a book to my daughter or chucking the ball around my boys without this crap and interference running around in my head. So it was deeply personal to me. My dream is I'm here in front of you and I believe with every iota of my soul is that symbol right there will do for mental illness what the yellow bracelet and my friends at Livestrong have done for cancer. And I thank everybody here for believing such a thing is possible. Thank you. <laughs> now, thank you. Uh, what I'd like to do, I, I, I got a couple of minute exercise that, uh, that I'd like to do with you guys. And uh, I've all told you my story. And uh, now I'd like to try to take a couple minutes and uh, help you frame maybe your story. Now, they're going to pass out, I think, these storyboards that for everybody. If you can just hustle those out. Hopefully, everybody's got a, a pen, a pencil. And I don't expect that, that we'll be able to do this exercise in, in three minutes. But at least we can start the process, and you can all take this home and, and give it some thought. And you'll see the, the first uh, 
the first box there is that horseshoe. And I'd like you all to stop. Stop for a moment and give some consideration as to why you're lucky. I was lucky because I got diagnosed with mental illness. So give some thought as to, to why you were lucky. And then I'd like you to, to, to move along in that next box. And give some consideration as to what's your aha moment? What's your lightning bolt? What's going to maybe change the direction of your life? And then segue over to that bullseye. What are you better at than anybody else in the world? We all got it. What's going to be your calling? And finally, it'll, it'll, you'll make your way to that, that last box, that frame. That frame that ultimately is, is your purpose. What is that? For me, it was to try to build a symbol that would change the face of mental illness. For each and every one of us, it's something different. We all have the ability to, to do it. So I don't care whether you, you paint it, you draw it, you code it, you sing it, you know, try to, try to find your thing. And it'll be a better world for all of us. So thank you.